Hi, Richard. I'm Isabel from The Upcoming. It's lovely to speak to you today and congratulations on this fantastic film. Alleluia. Oh, thank you very much. Good. You're welcome. I loved it. I really enjoyed it. Oh, Um, Oh, good. Could you start by maybe those of the, you know, who are new to it, could you give us sort of a brief introduction as to what Alleluia film is all about and what viewers can expect when they watch it? Um, Well, it's about care of uh, the ill and care of the old. Um, And it has, there are two characters, main characters. One is an Indian doctor who is applying for UK citizenship who idolizes the NHS. He's He absolutely has this sort of utopian view of the NHS being a sort of perfect institution which serves the public from cradle to, to grave. And on the other side, you have a very experienced, utterly pragmatic nursing sister, the part played uh, uh, um, by um, Jennifer Saunders. And you see, you track the two through the film and um, see how this population of old people are cared for. And they're in this hospital called The Beth, which is a sort of microcosmic version of of the NHS itself. Um, You see how their fortunes vary. Um, And it ends with with, um, uh, COVID because it uh, it was filmed during the epidemic and we had quite severe, we had to observe quite severe COVID protocols. So um, yes, it's the story of care of the old, care of the ill. And how did you kind of go bringing this adaption of the play by Alan Bennett to screen and what was, you know, what were some of the important things that you thought were necessary to make changes? Because, I mean, you don't break the fourth wall either. Like, he doesn't use a camera to interview the patient, you know. Um, was it kind of important to replicate the theatre production or bring kind of some kind of new perspective no, to it? It was absolutely not the intention to replicate the the theatre production, which is is quite different in many respects. The film is quite different. Um, the the stage production was much more surrealistic, and it had the choir was sort of there at various intervals, and it was like a um, commentary almost. And then the the dramatic scenes were um, between the musical intervals, um, and it ended with a um, song and dance of the the patients doing a song and dance, old people doing a song and dance. So what we chose to do was to concentrate on on the reality and try and tell the same story, Alan Bennett's story, and tell it in a way that was real rather than surreal. And it starts with the important sentence that I've always loved old people, which is such a sort of arresting and unusual thing to say, because a lot of people think the old people, old people are redundant. And as a society, we're not good at dealing with old people and we don't look after the old. Um, And in this film, when the they're in a geriatric wards and when they're fit but old, they get um, evicted from the hospital and they get decanted into care homes, which we know to be inadequately funded and inadequately resourced. And on the whole, you know, very, very poorly paid staff. So, um, yeah, it's it's I suppose provocative and and intended to be provocative to make people think, oh yes, well, what do we do about this? But I think it's also funny and humane and and touching. I mean, it's supposed to be an entertainment, a provocative entertainment, you could say. Thank you. And can you talk a little bit about the brilliant ensemble cast that you're working with here? I mean, you've got Dane Dent, Derek Jacobi. I mean, I'm sure 
And I know through your extensive career, you've worked with a lot of these actors before. I, I had worked with most of the cast before, which makes things a lot easier. And um, a lot of the older patients are sort of almost my contemporaries. So I've known for, I mean, for instance, I've known Judy for 65 years. We've been friends. Um, so, you know, it goes back at 65, no, 55 years. Hang on, how old am I? I'm nearly 80, 55 years. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yes, it's, it's like they were like a family to me. Um, and I love working with ensembles. Um, I don't warm to the idea that you've got a sort of pyramid, you know, there's a sort of big star and then lesser creatures, you know, um, down the sides of the, the pyramid. To me, everybody is important. And that's true of, that's what Judy thinks. And Derek thinks so. You know, it the, the, there was there's no star behaviour. And what was it like then to also bring on comedian and actress? You know, um, Jennifer Saunders working on this. Um, well, Jennifer, I had directed Jennifer in the theatre. In I think it was the first play she'd ever been in, and I've always thought that Jennifer was a considerable um, actor, not just a comedian or not just comic act, just a really good actor. And and she shows it, I think, in this film. It's a very subtle and winning performance. And um, I think, I hope that people will be uh, surprised and impressed by her performance. I was. <laughs> She's amazing. <laughs> I think obviously you've got Buddy Gill, you know, coming. It's fantastic as Dr. Valentine and, and the way he narrates kind of through the film and at the end. I know you kind of mentioned that earlier on, but was it very important for you as a director to kind of get that warmth through his character and to show the very heart of some of the people that work in the geriatric world? Yeah, yes. And, you know, he, he says at the beginning that um, I've always loved old people. It's... It's an amazing statement, I think, because, you know, you say you like, but actually to love old people. Another character in the film says, not even old people like old people. <laughs> um, so it, it it is unusual. And he does bring to it a kind of generosity of spirit that I think is, is really touching. And as you can say a sort of innocence. And of course he is... You know, he's from India. He's applying for UK um, citizenship. And you can say, well, he's naive. And he possibly is naive because he believes the best of everything. Um, but I think that naivety is uh, contrasted with the experience and um, expedience of, of Jennifer's character. And um, what do you think of some of the themes? You know, obviously we see the struggles that the NHS face quite apparently in this, and and also we see the pandemic. What do you think of some of the other themes that run through this film that are really important for viewers to to see and, and glean from this? Um, family, you know, the importance of family, uh, the the and the loneliness of old age when you know either you've been abandoned by the family or don't have family or in the central relationship of uh, um, David Bradley's character to his son, that they start off with a massive mutual misunderstanding and um, distance, emotional distance from each other and, and end together. And I find that very touching. I can see that. And um, obviously, film this on location with any kind of standout moments for you, anything memorable during this filming? Um, well, we filmed part of it in Wakefield, and the film is set in Wakefield. But the rest of it, the Beth was actually in a disused hospital in uh, in North London. Um, 
And I, what I remember of it is we we were filming in November is the bitter cold every time yeah. you went outside the ward. And because it was we were filming during partial lockdown, it meant that we had to social distancing. So there was a fair amount of time sort of walking around shivering. That's what I remember quite vividly. <laughs> I can imagine it being a bit spooky as well. <laughs> uh, absolutely. And um, it spent its last days, the hospital, as a mental hospital. And there's some terrible, frightening sort of graffiti of patients on the brickwork. Mm. Well, thank you very much for speaking to thank me today. You. Thank you very much. Wonderful film. And I look forward thank to you. everyone watching it. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Bye.